cold showers, ice baths, do they really help you burn fat? Well, one study found something wild, a four to 12 fold spike in your body's fat burning hormone, norepinephrine. Not four to 12%, I'm talking four to 12 times. That's the kind of response researchers usually only see with extreme stress. So I had to ask, does that actually make you leaner? Or is this another case of cool science that doesn't really translate to real world results? And if you've seen my fasting videos, you already know how fasting trains the metabolism through food timing, flipping those repair and energy switches like AMPK and mitochondrial biogenesis. But what if temperature could do the same thing through your skin instead of your diet? That's the question we're about to answer because the research behind cold exposure is far more fascinating and far more surprising than most people realize. But before we dive in, here's the quick background on fat because this matters. Brown fat isn't what most people think. You've got white fat, which is the stuff most of us want to lose for a better physique. And this is the fat that actually stores energy. Then there's brown fat, which burns energy. It's packed with mitochondria, those tiny engines inside the cells that convert food into energy. And that's what gives it that brown looking color. It's loaded with iron rich mitochondria that generate heat. And that's called thermogenesis, keeping your body warm by literally burning calories. When we're babies, we have a lot of it. This is because as a newborn, we can't shiver yet and brown fat keeps us warm. But here's what's fascinating. Up until about 2009, scientists thought adults basically didn't have any brown fat. Then PET scans came onto the scenes and they revealed we do, mostly around the neck, the shoulders and spine. But in most adults, it's barely active. So when people talk about activating brown fat, they're talking about flipping the on switch for burning calories. The question is, does it burn enough to actually make a difference when it comes to weight loss? Well, let's take a look here. In a 1982 study done on rats and published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, the researchers in this study exposed the rats to four degrees Celsius, which turns out to about 39 degrees Fahrenheit and measured norepinephrine turnover inside brown fat. The result was pretty dramatic, a four to 12 fold increase in norepinephrine activity, depending on how long they stayed exposed. This matters because norepinephrine is basically the body's burn fat now signal. It tells brown fat to start generating heat by burning calories, which is cool. But of course we're not rats, right? So what about in us humans? Well, come to find out, there's actually a good amount of research now. A 2022 meta-analysis from Frontiers in Physiology looked at 10 human studies and found that when people were exposed to mild cold around 60 to 66 degrees Fahrenheit, their daily energy expenditure went up by about, I think it was 188 extra calories burned on an average. Research published in the Journal of Physiological Anthropology found that people who already had brown fat activity saw their energy expenditure increase by 88% during a two hour cold exposure at a temperature, I think it was around 66 degrees. It's pretty good. Those without active brown fat only saw a 3% increase. And even more interesting, that same study showed that brown fat activity can increase by about 31%, even with mild daily exposure to cold temperatures, like what you'd feel in a slightly chilly room, but there's a catch. Here's the thing most people never mention. Whether this actually works depends on whether you have active brown fat in the first place. Studies show that leaner, younger people are far more likely to have active brown fat. It tends to decrease with age and it's less active in people who are overweight, which is a little ironic because those are the ones who benefit the most. And here's something most people skip over. If you're over 40 or if you're significantly overweight, you might not have much active brown fat at all, which means cold exposure might do almost nothing for you at all metabolically until it builds up over months of doing it. This isn't a universal hack. It's dependent on each individual state. And if you do have active brown fat, those extra 188 calories a day, that comes to about a half of a candy bar. Not nothing, but not the metabolic miracle made out to be by a lot of influencers out there. However, and this is crucial, repeated exposure changes the game. Studies where participants spent two hours a day at 62 degrees for six weeks actually showed measurable increases in brown fat volume and activity. They burned more fat at rest and even lost a small amount of body weight. Now, let's be real about all this. 
and now about the timeline. We're talking two hours a day for six weeks minimum to see any measurable changes. That's not a weekend biohack. It's a lifestyle change and commitment. So it's not just about flipping a short-term switch. It's about building more brown fat over time. But remember, your body's smart. In animal studies, when metabolism increased with cold exposure, food intake also increased, meaning they ate more to compensate. Your body doesn't want to stay in a caloric deficit for a long period of time. And hold on, stick with me for a minute, because there's actually something more interesting happening here that nobody talks about other than the fat loss. There's something more compelling that comes about from this. The metabolic benefits. Multiple studies have shown that cold exposure improves insulin sensitivity and glucose metabolism. In fact, research from the National Institutes of Health found that sleeping in a 66 degree room not only increased brown fat activity, but also improved insulin sensitivity significantly. This is because when brown fat activates, it pulls glucose and fatty acids out of your bloodstream to use them as fuel. This lowers sugar and triglycerides, which supports long-term metabolic health. So if you're already doing things like fasting, calorie cycling, or training for metabolic flexibility, this might actually fit into that strategy more naturally than you'd think. So if you want to experiment with this, here's what the research suggests. First, think of cold exposure as an optimization strategy, not a foundation. If your diet, sleep, and exercise aren't dialed in, this won't fix much of anything at best you're getting maybe a five to 10% metabolic edge. Second, you don't need to torture yourself with ice baths. Most studies show benefits at 60 to 66 degrees. That's a cool shower, a breezy walk, or a slightly chilly bedroom, not hyperthermia. Third, consistency matters more than intensity. The studies that built more brown fat used mild cold exposure daily for weeks. Short-term intensity doesn't beat long-term consistency. The goal is mild, consistent, cold stress, not acute torture sessions. Why? Because you'll actually stick with sleeping in a 65 degree room for long term than jumping into multiple ice baths. And in this case, compliance over six weeks beats intensity for three days. Here's how this looks. Sleep in a cooler room around 65 to 68 degrees and showers with two to three minutes of cold water. Take morning or evening walks in cool weather without bundling up, but take a jacket or sweater if you need it. No reason to subject yourself to a cold or a flu. And keep your living space slightly cooler during the day. That's it, mild, consistent cold stress. No pain, no dramatic suffering, just subtle environmental conditioning that trains your metabolism over time. Now, there are other things people stack with this. There's cayenne pepper for receptor activation, breath work for adrenal spikes, and there's research on those mechanisms as well. But cold exposure itself has the most direct evidence. So that's what we're focusing on today. Bottom line, does cold exposure activate brown fat? Yes, it absolutely does. Does that translate into major fat loss on its own? Probably not. You're looking at an extra 150 to 200 calories a day at best. And that's if your brown fat is active, but the metabolic improvements, better insulin sensitivity, glucose regulation, and mitochondrial efficiency, those are real and potentially far more valuable in the long run. If your goal is metabolic health, not just the scale, that's where this research actually shines. So is it worth it? That depends actually on your goals and your tolerance for long-term consistency. And if you've been following my fasting videos, think of this as a next layer. Fasting improves your metabolism through food timing. Cold exposure improves it through temperature. Both trigger the same internal repair systems, AMPK, mitochondrial biogenesis, and fat oxidation, just from different directions. This is David. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.